Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about equilibrium constants. Um, equilibrium constants are basically a mathematical way of expressing where uh, the position of an equilibrium system lies. Okay, and so hopefully by the end of this film, you'll know what an equilibrium constant expression looks like, and you'll know how to write one if you're given a, uh, the equation for a reaction. And also you'll have had to think about what sort of factors will um, cause an equilibrium constant to change. And judging by its name, equilibrium constant, you might be thinking, well, probably not very many things, and you'd be quite right about that. But anyway, let's have a look at what an equilibrium constant looks like. Okay, this here in orange is an equilibrium constant expression. Okay, so if you're asked to write an equilibrium constant expression, it will start with capital K for equilibrium constant, and then we'll be expressing this equilibrium constant in terms of the concentrations, okay, of the substances in the equation. Okay, how do we know this here? Well, because it's Kc, but you won't always see this C in tests and exams, okay, because WACE only deals with equilibrium constants in terms of concentrations. You can express them in terms of partial pressures, in which case it's Kp, but we don't need to worry about that too much. So your equilibrium constant will always look something like this, okay, it will always have the concentrations of things in it, okay, so the substance in square brackets reads as the concentration of that substance in moles per dm cubed, so this one here is the concentration of C in moles per dm cubed, okay. And as you can see here, the equilibrium constant is a fraction, or in other words, a ratio, okay? And it's a ratio of the products on the top divided by the reactants on the bottom, okay? So um, the bigger Kc is, or the bigger the equilibrium constant is, the more products there will be compared to the reactants. So in other words, the position of equilibrium will lie to the right, lots of products, not very many reactants. If you've got a small equilibrium constant, well, the opposite will apply. You'll have lots of reactants present at equilibrium and not very many products. Okay, so in other words, the yield will be small. There won't be very much of these things. Um, what else is there to say about this? Well, what you can see here is that as well as having products on top and reactants on the bottom, these things are multiplied together in each part of the fraction. Okay, and they're also raised to certain powers. Okay, so the concentration of C is raised to the power little c, which corresponds to the stoichiometric coefficient of C in the equation. So if we think of these little or the lowercase letters as being the moles of each substance in the equation, or the stoichiometric coefficient, then we'll raise the concentrations to the powers of these numbers. Okay, so if we had two moles of A in this equation, then the concentration of A would be squared, and so on. There's one other really important thing to realize about equilibrium constant expressions, and that is that because they measure concentrations, they'll only deal with substances that are either in solution or are gases. So in other words, things that we can measure the number of moles per liter of, okay, or the number of moles per dm cubed, which is just another word for liter. Okay, so anything that's liquid or solid, whose con any pure liquid or solid, whose concentration effectively doesn't change, you'll always have the same number of moles per litre of that substance. Those substances won't appear in an equilibrium constant expression. That's really, really important, okay? Because when you're asked to write these equilibrium constant expressions, you have to remember not to include anything that's solid or liquid. And we'll see some examples in just a moment. Okay, it's also important to realize that you don't ever have to do the maths here, really. Okay, so you won't be asked to do calculations using these expressions, you'll just be asked to write the expressions. So, um, I think the best thing to do would be to just have a look at a few examples of these things for a few different systems. Okay, we'll start with this system up here, okay, where nitrogen and hydrogen are turning into ammonia. Okay. All the things in this, in this equilibrium are gases, so they're all going to appear in the equilibrium constant expression. Kc is given as the concentration of ammonia, because it's a product on top, divided by the product of, so these things multiplied together, nitrogen times hydrogen, but we've had to square the ammonia, because there was two moles of it in the equation, and we've had to cube 
the hydrogen because there's three moles of that. Okay. Moving on to this one here, where we've got, again, two reactants and two products. Different mole ratio this time. In fact, there's one mole of everything, so there's no powers seen in this equilibrium constant expression because all the powers are one. Okay. This time, not all the substances are gases or aqueous. In fact, we've got a solid here, so the carbon is a solid. Okay. So the carbon won't appear in the equilibrium constant expression, which is why we don't see it at the bottom of the fraction. We've just got the water here as a gas. Water won't normally appear because it will normally be a liquid, but here it's a gas, so we do put it in. Okay, and we multiply the products, the concentration of the products together on the top and divide by the reactants, but in this case not including carbon because it's a solid. Okay, moving on to this equilibrium system here where most of the things, well not most in fact, half of them, no gases, but um, we've got two substances that are dissolved, they're AQ, so we can measure the concentration of these, but the concentration of the two solids will be constant, okay? So in other words, their concentrations can't change, so we won't put them into our equilibrium constant expression. And so K, the equilibrium constant, is given as the product, okay? Raised to the power 1, because there's one mole of it, divided by the reactant, which is silver plus, squared, because we've got two of them. Okay, we've got the square brackets in here to indicate that we're measuring the concentrations of these substances. Okay, and finally, we'll just look at this equilibrium system here where calcium carbonate is being thermally decomposed. We're heating it up and it turns into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. In this case, the equilibrium constant is, expression is very simple because there's only one AQ or gas here. So we can only measure the concentration of one of them. That's the CO2. It's raised to the power 1 because there's one mole of it. And so the equilibrium constant is simply CO2. If I suppose if this reaction was written the other way around, so if we were looking at CO2 turning into, so we just simply wrote it this way around, turning in, oops, CA, CAO plus CO2 turning into CA, CO3, then because this is now a reactant, it goes on the bottom. So KC would be equal to 1 over the concentration of CO2. Okay? So it is important to realize that Kc depends on the way that the reversible reaction is written. Okay, You'll invert Kc if you write the reaction the other way around. Okay? And just because things disappear, it doesn't mean they're removed, I suppose, from the expression altogether. So this would be CO2 over 1, and when we invert it, we put the 1 on there. So things that vanish, like this carbon here, become ones rather than becoming zeros, I suppose you could say. Okay, so um, moving on now to looking at a couple of things that um, might change K, okay, or things that we perhaps might think would change the value of K. Okay, we're going to look at this system. It was the first one from the previous slide, nitrogen and hydrogen turning into ammonia. Here's the equilibrium constant expression. Okay, and um, Let's look at something that maybe might change the value of K. Okay? We've been looking at things like adding and removing reactants or products. So let's say we put some more hydrogen in here. What would happen to the value of K? Well, this value would increase. But Le Chatelier's principle tells us that if we increase this, that the system will try to lower it. And it will do that by reacting these two things together to make more of this. So, although the initial change means that Kc will get smaller, okay, because H2 got bigger, as, NH, as the system responds and returns to a new equilibrium, the concentration of ammonia will increase, the concentration of nitrogen will fall, as will the concentration of hydrogen, but not beyond its original value. Okay? And so Kc will actually start to grow again. And in fact, K or Kc, the equilibrium constant, will not be affected by changes in concentration. Okay? Because Le Chatelier's principle says that the system will establish a new equilibrium where K will return to its original value. Okay? So the equilibrium constant is a constant. Okay? And there's only one thing that will affect it, and that is temperature. 
Okay, well, let's just look at another example. It's a very important thing I just said there, by the way, that um, I kind of just slipped it in at the end of the slide, really. K will only change when the temperature changes, okay? Otherwise, it is a constant. Okay, so let's look at this equilibrium system where we've got, again, the calcium carbonate decomposing, turning into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, okay? Um, Kc, in this case, is equal to the concentration of carbon dioxide because it's the only gas, and, or Aq, in the expression, okay? And you might be thinking, well, what about here? I mean, Le Chatelier's principle says that if I increase the amount of calcium carbonate, then Le Chatelier's principle says that it's got this system's got to lower it. So... I'll produce more CO2, and that can only cause K to increase, right? Well, yes, but we've missed something quite important there, because although we've added more calcium carbonate to the system, we haven't caused its concentration to change, okay? So, in other words, adding more of this solid, there'll still be the same number of moles of solid in every litre of solid, right? Because it's a pure solid, so its concentration is constant, okay? So in other words, by adding more of it, I haven't changed the concentration. So Le Chatelier's principle, which says that if I increase the concentration, the system will try and lower it, Le Chatelier's principle says that nothing's going to happen here because I haven't changed any concentrations. So K will remain the same if I add more calcium carbonate. However, this reaction here is endothermic, okay, whereas this one is exothermic. So if I heat this reaction up, Le Chatelier's principle says that it will try to cool itself down. How will it do that? It will favour the forward reaction. That will produce more products, okay, which means that the concentration of carbon dioxide will increase. So for this particular reaction, if I increase the temperature, the value of the equilibrium constant increases. Okay? If I decrease the temperature, the value of the equilibrium constant would decrease because the concentration of carbon dioxide would fall as the system tried to heat itself up. I'm just going to go back to the previous slide and have a look at some temperature effects here. Okay? In this example, the forward reaction is exothermic and the reverse reaction is endothermic. If I cool this reaction down, it will try to heat itself up, we'll get more products, less reactants, and so this equilibrium constant value will increase because the top of the fraction will grow and the bottom of the fraction will fall. If I cool this, uh, sorry, if I heat this reaction up, the endothermic reaction is favoured. Okay, should remember this from our temperature principles film in the past. Okay, so the endothermic reaction will be favoured will get more reactants and less products at equilibrium, and so the value of Kc will fall. Okay? So, the equilibrium constant can be affected by temperature, but not by any other change in conditions. That's a really important thing about K. So you should know by now how to write an equilibrium constant expression by looking at an equation. You should know what things will affect the value of K, and what things won't. And also, you should not worry about ever trying to plug some values into this, because in a WACE exam, you don't have to calculate the value of K, but you do have to be able to say something about the position of equilibrium based on the size of K. So if K is a very small number, it tells you you've got lots of reactants and not very many products. If it's a big number, i.e. bigger than 1, right, because the top of the fraction is bigger than the bottom, then you've got more products than you have reactants. Okay, so that's about it for equilibrium constants. Um, the last film in the series um, about equilibrium is, is um, a film about industrial equilibrium processes. Um, so, assuming you've understood everything up until now, move on to that film. If you've got any questions, please make a note of them and ask about them as soon as you possibly can.